Welcome to the November 15th meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. Happy Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Uh, as always, we begin our meetings with a general public comment. Does anyone sitting here now at least have a general public comment to make? No? And those folks are outside yakking it up. Uh, approval of minutes. We have two, September the 21st, is that right, or is it 27th? 27th. 27th, and October 4th, we'll take them one at a time. Is there a motion to approve the 27th, September 27th meeting? So make a motion. Uh, second? Second. Uh, any discussion? I have a question. Uh, I just wondered if there had been any action on the uh, donation to Stark Hampton and David Drake's no, and I dropped the ball on that, and I feel really bad about that. So, oof, uh, done nothing about it. Thank you for the reminder. Um, um, would someone, I, I mean, I'd be happy to volunteer to take that on. That would be great. Would you do that? Sure. Good. Thank you so much. Thanks, one. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for pointing out that. that out. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, the October 4th, is there a move to accept minutes? Uh, second. 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 Discussion? Yeah. I have one question. Um, my my memory or notes were just a little bit different on the community housing supportive services. I'm not sure I'm correct, but I think that um, we were told that the current contract goes through March yeah. rather than August and that the current funding goes through August. I don't know what others remember, but that's, it was a little confusing to me. What does that I mean? What that does wrong. that mean, the contract goes That they had a partway. contract with CHD. Oh, that, uh, on the other end. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Mm -hmm. But the, the funding, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that's what it meant. I can it's, double check that. I'm not sure. Which way to go. This is what I wrote down, and I may have been confused as well. So, Sarah, you'll check that? Yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you for calling attention to that. Any other discussion? I All think I got the same notes on the actual. I think I don't remember this. So, yeah. Okay. So I might have transposed them. So say how it is one more time, as your recollection. Of it. That the contract, current contract with CHD, goes through March 2018. But the funding is through. And that the funding goes extends through August of 2018. Okay, thank you. Uh, all those in uh, favor of minutes? Opposed? Okay. Uh, chair's report, um, just to sort of reiterate, and I, I suppose more for Jack's benefit since you were uh, out of state for our last meeting, just how um, thankful I, I, I am to live in a town like Northampton with however many 60 people uh, being so articulate and so passionate and so supportive of the work that that gets done in our town and it's very much of an honor for me to serve on this committee and listen to democracy in action I think I was uh, very impressed I mean, people were, again it was, it was really I thought a good evening and, a, and great to hear so much so much support I misspoke at that meeting and I think I may have misspoke twice so I would like a minutes to reflect but I think I said a couple times we had three million in projects. It's actually two million, close to two million, one point, whatever, what is it? Uh, uh, so I apologize for that. Made it sound better, than better <laughs> or worse, more dire, more dire. <laughs> but again, my my apologies for um, for for this. Uh, moving on to the financial uh, report. Hopefully folks picked up their email yesterday and there was a revised mm -hmm. one that came in. So it Sarah, you want to? Literally 10 seconds after I hit mm -hmm. it, of it course. said, well, look, we got our statement. Mm -hmm. So we have slightly less money available than we thought that we would. Our state match went down. We're, we are under 20% now, mm -hmm. which is certainly the first time that that has ever happened. Uh, so we have 865000 
and we can discuss bonding in more detail later if it should come up, but um, we, if the committee is interested, we should be able to, with uh, the right length of borrowing, fund everything, potentially. I, it would have a negative impact on future funding rounds, but it, it's mm -hmm. definitely possible. So th that's sort of different information than, than I think most of us had where we thought our bonding uh, ceiling was up at 250 or 300,000, whatever, and now uh, it's been reinterpreted by Sarah. So, so the, the numbers are, are remain the same for the amount available to bond, but those are our, that's our max additional payment per year. Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. So theoretically we could. Okay. Uh, so everyone's aware that um, the, we have, uh, of, of that 865,000, has to be in affordable housing, 164 in open space, 164 in historic, and then the rest is undesignated. Uh, so we have those those limits that are set for just, us. Can I just ask yes, please. Um, the, sir, the 168 is because there's $4,000 carryover in the housing reserve, yes. is that what? And the three thousand um, dollars, the small grant that's not has that been applied to the open space or no? Good question. Oh, it has not yet. So that would be actually one sixty one. Yeah. Is that correct? Okay, everybody got that? Which category is open space? Oh, yeah. So, so not one sixty four, but instead one. I have to have a question. That's for small. Uh, yeah, I want to just be on this. Um, one, yeah. <laughs> so these, these funds that are reserved for the different categories, um, is this funding only coming from tax, does this only reflect tax revenue or does it reflect tax revenue plus the state match? Uh, it's tax revenue plus the state match. So we set aside 10% of what we expected be receiving. Right, but I thought the, what, the match that we got was lower than we thought. It's, it's a little bit lower, but oh. it's not probably low enough to, to, to go back and change it. Okay, that was my question. It would be about a less than 4,000 dollars difference. Okay. Any other questions for Sarah uh, regarding the financial issues or the financial report that she gave us? Good to go? Okay, so we have a job in front of us this evening. Um, we do not have to complete this. We do not have to um, come to a firm conclusion. I think it would be nice if we did, but we are under no pressure to do so. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but come about 9 o'clock, I have fading and <coughs> incapable of making rational thought as much as I am capable of ever making it. So we'll look at 9 o'clock and see how we're doing at that time and then we'll figure out where to go from, from there if that's, if that's all right. Um, I was sort of racking my brain about how to begin um, and just to reiterate what we've done in the past is to go project by project and for Martha, your benefit, we have this whole sort of shopping cart um, scenario where we, someone makes a motion, we put something in the shopping cart. That means it's in the shopping cart. It doesn't mean we can move through checkout. Um, we can put whatever we want in the shopping cart before we check out. We can remove those. We can play with those numbers. But at least it's a way to get, to get the discussion going. Again, we have 1.9 just about two million in requests. We have 865,000 in our total account, but as Sarah has told us, uh, we could bond. Um, right now, we're putting out how much? A, a uh, year 560,000 is out in what we bond. Is that what our financial report says? Uh, it, depend, it depends on the year because the payments the payments fluctuate, but our debt service for the fiscal year 18 is 585,000. Yes. So as it is, and those are for, correct me if I'm wrong, Sarah, three projects, Pulaski Park, the Pulaski Park extension, 
and Florence Field. Is that it? Just those three? That is servicing our body. There, there's still yeah. a little bit in Allard. There's a little bean and Allard as well. Yeah. It, that will be done in FY20. What's bean and Allard? That was the acquisition of the property that is no, Florence. Oh, okay. Florence. So our uh, the implications of us bonding, of course, is that uh, we have much less money to deal with in, in future years, and there's a certain amount of, of uh, financial implications to bonding, which means we pay more than, than we do. For no Nonetheless, that, that is an option for us. Um, I thought one way to start the discussion is just to spend perhaps a few minutes on this question. Uh, in the past, we have always had two rounds. Yeah, come on. Just before we get to that, can we actually just, can we start to just go over the bonding capacity a little more? Because I'm not sure I understand what our capacity is right now. Uh, sure. So the if you go to the did you have the I have it here. Yeah. So if you go to the bonding capacity tab, if you we can only bond on our local income projections because right. the state match isn't guaranteed, and as we see it, it tends to go down every year. Um, and we can only bond 65% of, of that because we need we have still have to put the set asides into the right categories. So that uh, if you look at the estimated amount remaining for regular projects, that's where the, the bonding figure is derived from. So that's after the set asides and our and our debt service for that year. That would be how much we would have available to spend. Nine oh eight. Yeah, before the state match. So, the so then our, our maximum amount available to bond, which would be the, an additional bond payment, is derived from that figure. The maximum amount available to bond. That's part of the nine oh eight, though. No, it's the next column over. No, oh, it's a it. double. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Not, we don't have nine oh eight plus two oh seven. No. Nine, no. The two oh seven is in the nine. It is. Yeah. So we have nine. So, that, so if we did decide to fully bond out, yeah. you would have to reduce the amount available significantly, potentially for each year. But if we do for, this, for future years, this, future year, years, this yeah. year that we have nine oh eight plus uh, two forty, which is the state match. Is that right? No. Yeah. So the question is, how much could we bond? And the answer is... I'm not saying we should bond our right. capacity. I'm just wondering what would that be? What is it we're sealing? Yeah. Yeah. So that would be the, the maximum bond payment amount. And even now a million dollar bond, unless we only bonded out for three years, we wouldn't be making a $200,000 payment. Because it's okay. So we're going to... I'm sorry. So the, the yeah. so the maximum amount available to bond is is basically our the maximum new borrowing payment that we would be able to new make. borrowing payment mm -hmm. and based on that payment we estimate we could borrow how much nine oh eight right no it's not mm -hmm. what I have. it's sort of backing into it. it once we figure out how much we would like to bond <coughs> then we can take a look at what that might so, be so you don't know the number no depends on the term. Yeah. You know, is it five year payment, a ten year right, payment? Right, but Brian Brian indicated that if we bonded that we would be able to fully fund everything that was currently being requested and I'm not sure how we get to that from this two hundred and seven thousand dollars. You did it over ten years. Yeah. Is that is that what you did, Brian? That's what I I rely on Sarah for this. Yeah. I mean it couldn't be a, a two year bond. Then we wouldn't be if you bonded at a million dollars, then we wouldn't be able to make that payment. So the 207 is how much we would be paying out a year is what our, is what our ceiling is. Yes. In addition to what we're bonding now. Yes. Okay. And if the committee decides through discussion that well let's look at bonding a million dollars, then then I can provide. That's what you should, so you know that we could bond 1.1, so that gets us to. Yeah. 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 So 1.1 over 10 years would, would well be within these. It's less right Got it. Does that make sense? That does now. Yeah. Okay. Everybody got that. Mm -hmm. I was lost because the the amount that we could fund that isn't reflected here, so that's where I was getting a little too confused. Yeah. Yeah. The bonding capacity tab is completely separate than our cash tab. Okay. 
Any further questions for Sarah regarding the financial stuff budgeting? Okay, so um, if we were to, uh, to, to fully fund all of these projects uh, or half fund them without bonding at $865,000, that would leave us with a round two with, uh, with no money. Mm -hmm. um, we would be breaking precedent to do that. Uh, the, the CPA, since its inception, has always had two rounds and always had uh, always entertain projects for those two rounds. So this is a uh, uncharted waters here. We are um, we've not been faced with this issue before. So I think it may be useful to have a brief discussion of whether uh, we feel comfortable with fully with spending out our 865, perhaps more if, if, if we're bonding this round. Knowing the implications of that is that we will, we will that we won't meet again, but uh, <laughs> we will not be entertaining new projects for the for the spring. Uh, so thoughts on that? I'm not sure what's gained by simply rolling some of the money over uh, and not bonding and not paying for something that you think ought to be done. If if there is something you think ought to be done. Currently, um, of course, I wasn't here early on when maybe decisions were made that it, it really needed to be split in two different ways, you know. But there was a lot more money. Yeah, I agree. I think if we have the projects in front of us and we want to fund the projects, then we should look at the pile of money we have. However, the one thing that I'm wondering if we might want to consider is putting some money aside for small projects and the small grants because that's a really nimble piece of money for some very specific little targeted pieces like we just did the, the prison farm. Yep. And and and, it, and and we've done a few other small things that are nice to give an opportunity for the community to get quick money and, and, and uh, quick action on. And the small grants tend to be very quick action pieces. They're mm -hmm. they're they're not a lot of money, and they're done quickly, and there's something to show for where that money went to the community. So I'd, I'd like us to look to spring for small grants. So to refresh our memory, the small grants max is $3,000. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We funded one this cycle already, the jail restoration thing. Uh, the most we've ever funded is two or three. Two. I remember two. doing two. Two. Mm -hmm. So do you have a a suggestion setting us, uh, you know, six thousand, nine thousand. Is there a number you'd like to throw out? Uh, I hadn't gone that far with thinking, but I know the maximum we've seen is the maximum that we saw three. I think there, were, there was one cycle where we had three. Yeah, I think we had um, two from the over. Right, we bumped one over, or we rejected one. So if we had money to fund one or two small grants, I think that would that would be appropriate for the spring. If we spent on the rest of the money, Chris, you would say something. Yeah, um, I, there's a piece of me that's very uncomfortable with the idea of, of spending it all down, and I can't, I, I, I can't honestly say why. Um, I, I like the, I like the idea of putting aside modest amount for the small grant thing because I, I agree with you. I like your point about them being a, a, a nimble a nimble way of doing things. Um, I just I find myself uncomfortable with the prospect that we are basically shutting down um, any sort of major work by this by this committee until until next fall. Um, and yet having said that um, I also recognize that we have some really good projects in front of us. It would be a shame to put any of them in jeopardy if we had the ability to do something meaningful to support them on the off chance that something else might come along. So I'm, 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 I'm willing to, I'm willing to spend it all down, but I, I have reservations. And, uh, I just thought I needed to, I needed to put it out there. I'm exactly with, with Chris on, on this. I am willing to do it 
I would prefer to have some in reserve and as I went through it looking at what the timing is on the projects when they need the money I thought there were some amount that we could reserve and uh, have available in the, in the next round so that certain things came to pass or there was another really worthy project we would have something to work with. It's, it's a, a year is a long time. I, I think our deliberations are going to solve some of these problems for us because we're going to see either we're really excited about funding all these mm -hmm. projects or we have reservations that would get us to a reasonable true. point and and I like the idea also of the small grants for the spring if if we get down to their finagling some money that would keep the interest in the community going or even at a small grant level. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts, comments on holding back? Yeah. Brian, um I'm kind I'm kinda of with with Linda and Chris as far as not wanting to spend it down. I also don't want to bond ourselves into a corner yeah. where we can't we can't act on things and I'm not the smartest or the brightest bulb in the community as far as other things like this might be pending, but I can think of two that might be that might very well materialize in the short term and I want this committee to be in position to deal with those if and when um, they show up so I really don't want to tie our hands um, and I think last spring in the second session didn't we have like about we, we survived the fall with about 60 70 thousand I mean we had little to no maneuverability but at least we had something to deal with with what you were talking about with the yeah. small projects yeah. and I kind of like to see that if we can get there to come out similar to that I would just second that. Um, I do think um, that there may be other applications that come along. You know, the historical commission is thinking about a few things. Um, and there's also something to be said for um, you know, being selective and uh, sending a message to the community that this is a competitive process. And I think that only ups the game of the applicants. And I think also, too, if the program in Northampton was designed as a two-round program, I think we should honor that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't speak to the bonding issue the first go-round. Um, uh, and while I'm while I'm reluctant to spend it down, I'm I'm quite certain I don't want to bond ourselves and. Out of existence, um, technically, you know, effectively out of existence. I, I, um, I don't think that, I don't think that does us well in the short term, and I certainly don't want to be tying the hands of future committees um, by by setting up them up with obligations that, that they won't be able to, you know, that will limit any any activity on their part. So I'm, I'm, you know. It's going to have to. It's going to have to be. It's going to have to be a pretty compelling um, uh, project uh, or set of projects uh, that that would that would move me to bond any sort of significant amount at this point. Uh, you might move that issue along by asking if there's anybody in favor of bonding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Should, should we do that now? I think it's pretty hard to understand that question until we really see where we stand in terms of right. yeah. what we think is in the. In the bucket or a cart, but then it'll come up. Yeah. When are the, the when is the first thing that's bonded due to be completed? Yeah. Uh, that must the, be the thing that we we still have out there now. Yeah, yeah that would be. Do you have your in 2022? It opens up a lot. So it'd be the 2021 yeah. meetings. Yeah. It starts. We start to get about three hundred thousand dollars back. It's, it's it's a tab down. So. This is this is the number that is basically our annual capacity to, to bond. Must be Florence so Fields must end in about four years. It, so if you look down there, is it that quick? So you can bond right there. Florence Fields goes on for Green Allen. It's five years out. So so that's me. Yeah. 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 First part of the class. Yeah. 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 All right, let's listen to Sarah, please. Uh, so Bean Allen ends in fiscal year 20. Yeah. Bean Allen in 20, and that's how much, Sarah? Well, it's it's going it's going down. 
coming. Yeah, in. it's because we pay principal and interest at different times, and they're depending on how the borrowing is set up. They may be the same payments or different payments, but that's when that was over with. And uh, uh, Florence Fields is when? Is that next? The, plus, the main Pulaski looks like it ends in 2021. Okay. Then we have the Pulaski Overlook. And then uh, the Overlook and Florence Fields then will both end in FY27. It sounds so far away. So Florence Fields and Pulaski extension are 26. We're still here around that. You're still the chair. <laughs> okay, so that, that's helpful. And uh, and again, we have tried, the, the, I think um, Chris said we don't want to tie our hands. And, and we have tied our hands. And we're spending 585000 this year on bond. So to, do, to continue to do that would be to further mm -hmm. tie our hands. Exactly. Uh, but we will get back, we will get back to that. But what I am hearing is that there's at least some degree of discomfort with bonding, but we will see how the discussion goes. But I'm also sensing that we want to at least retain some amount of money, maybe as little as six or nine thousand for two or three small grants, but perhaps more than that. Um, again, that that will be determined. Um, but I'm not hearing anyone say, whoa, wait a minute, let's cut this in half. We're going to spend 400000 430000 this cycle, 430 next. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, so that we have 11, 9, how, what was it, 9 good projects in front of us. Um, and we can move on at this point to that, to that discussion. Um, so again, back to this shopping cart thing. Uh, how to begin? I mean, one thing is to let's to, it, and, and I'm sort of trying to wrap my brain around that um, today, uh, and didn't really come up with much other than I thought well, maybe we should start with the big ticket items first when we are fresher and sort of lump the one, two, three, four, five different housing uh, projects in, have a discussion on that, and try to move through those. Um, that's where the bulk of the money is. That's where the majority of the at least half the projects are. Uh, does anyone have an alternative? I mean, it's I'm not sure there's a, a best way to do this. Um, but if, if that's okay, we'll start with housing. Yeah. Is that all right? Okay. So just a couple things to remind us of. Um, one is that the Sargent House expansion, <coughs> excuse me, has with it both a historic preservation component yeah. as well as a housing component and um, uh, let's see, Sarah asked uh, Valley CDC how much of it is in historic, and they came up with, what was it? 300,000. 300,000 300, can be used for historic preservation. And our, the initial award, uh, the last round, was entirely out of historic preservation funds, so that would be reduced to So just when we're looking at these set-asides uh, for uh, historic and affordable housing, draw from both for that one project. The other thing to remind ourselves is that we have money, skin in the game, is that what you say? Mm -hmm. uh, money in already. We allocated 50,000 uh, last cycle um, to the Sargent House expansion. So in terms of that Valley CDC project, that is one project that we already have, have money in. The other project that we sort of have money in is the Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity, Glendale Road Homes. It was through our uh, through CPC that we purchased the land, most of which went to open space, but some of which went to those housing units, if people remember that. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember what the amount is, but just as a reminder, um, we have com we committed ourselves previously to that project, not in terms of the actual housing for Habitat for Humanity, but knowing that it was a project that would involve Habitat for Humanity. Um, also, uh, just a quick reminder, when a question was asked, and someone correct me if I'm wrong on this, if Pioneer Valley had, Habitat had to prioritize which ones would they do, and they came up with the Glendale Road Homes. Mm -hmm. uh, as a bigger project, I think was their explanation, maybe that was their only explanation. Don't look here who can answer that question. Uh -huh. is there, uh, is, uh, can I, 
Okay, is there a Pioneer Valley habitat? Yeah, yeah. I'm Megan, I'm the executive director. Okay, um, so Megan, if we're prioritizing, that was my recollection of what you folks said. It, as difficult it is for you to prioritize, it's like, which children do you like the best? <laughs> it was, it was because the overall budget is larger, there are three bedroom homes, so it's more money for us to raise to be able to complete the project. So this becomes a critical part of putting together the entire package. Okay, great, good, thank you. And we may ask you further questions down the road. The other thing to keep in mind is that um, we funded significantly the Northampton Housing Partnership Housing Supportive Services. Mm -hmm. And we had this discussion already, but just to refresh your memory. So that was three years ago. We funded them for three years. I don't know who else was on the committee uh, that, and you just, were? I was just joining. Just joining. Yeah. And, and again, uh, we had a long discussion about this because this did break precedence. So I think we had never funded a, a full-time staff person before. We had a lot of heated discussion about that. Is it the place of CPC to fund a staff position as wonderful as we may think it is in terms of vital keeping people in housing services? And my recollection, which is can be faulty at times, is that we were very clear that that uh, uh, that um, the Northampton Housing Partnership was to look at this as a three years in and 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 and, and we're out. Uh, and uh, and I think they spoke eloquently to the fact that they you know did their best mm -hmm. to seek alternative fundings to continue this successful program going, but they have not done so. So again, for those that you, uh, those, uh, who were not on the committee at that time, we really wrestled with that decision in the first place to fund. We decided to do that. I th uh, uh, in my opinion, it's been a very successful program, but we did so with the understanding that we would shut them off after three years. Does not mean that we cannot fund that, but that's just what the, what the history of that is. So really of these five projects, you know, we have three that we have a history of, a history with. The Glendale Road, we helped, we helped to fund the, uh, the land acquisition. Uh, Sergeant House, we've given them 50,000 housing supportive services. We funded the first three years of, uh, of that project. Do we know what Sergeant House <coughs> current hope is for when they may be able to start doing what they're doing. Uh, does anyone know the answer to that? Where's the floor is here. <laughs> can you help us out with that? I sure can. Um, typically when you go in for these larger sources from the state, especially tax credits, you expect to go in usually more than once. Um, we have had signals from DHC that they might fund us the first time we go in. For a variety of reasons. So our first application goes in November 30th for support housing dollars, followed by a February application for the tax credits and the other sources. So we're feeling more optimistic than usual, but it's not a guarantee. Mm -hmm. um, but we're hopeful that it might move quicker than usual. Is this a question of whether the money has been, I mean, Massachusetts does this interesting thing about okaying the money in the budget and then not freeing it up for people to use. Uh, what is the situation there? Is it budget or is it freeing it up for people to use? When we apply to the state for uh -huh. resources, usually it's money that's been committed. Okay. So it's either federal money that's coming flow, okay. flowing through the state or it's bond money and they have a certain cap each year. It's yeah. usually a five or ten year bond and they're, they're spending out of a single year's allocation of that bond. So you think that's next summer? For so awards? So the award of that state fund? Uh, if, we're, if all goes perfectly, right. we would, uh, best cases, we get funding awards in July or August. Right. And that would mean construction would begin? The next year. The next summer? So we're going to summer of 19. Maybe spring. Spring but of 19 is in yeah. the best case scenario. Yeah. Or Thank you. Any other questions regarding that? I just wanted to make one follow-up comment about the um, housing supportive services. Um, I recall that when we asked Peg Keller about um, the possibility of extending funding uh, for three years, you know, and then we talked about the option of 
doing it for less than that. Um, we, she, I think, suggested that one year would be helpful. Yes. And again, for your information, Martha, we can all, you know, we can uh, fund partial on any of these, uh, any of these projects. It's not a, a yes or no. Okay, so um, any, are there general questions about housing stuff that people would like, like to do? And then, if, if, if we want to follow what we've done in the past, we would go item by item of putting them in to the shopping cart. People would make motions to that effect. Then we could discuss that. And again, it's a preliminary into the shopping cart uh, thing. Um, do people have general housing comments about these five? What's a general comfort for? <laughs> well, it's, you know, I mean, it's, uh, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, well, I, have, I have another question. Uh, yeah, question. Uh, I think I asked this at the last meeting, and I probably wasn't being very articulate, but um, some of these projects, you know, 100% is being asked for, and then in some cases, in more cases, it's 2%. Um, and this is, I guess, more of a decision-making um, Procedure. You know, are there projects here that if we don't fund them, they won't move forward? The housing supportive services. Right. Okay. But what about the others? And if we don't fund them 100%, um, you know, can they reduce the scope of the project or value engineer it? Or um, I think with a lot of these housing projects, the, the our funding is being used as a sign of local support. Right. Mm -hmm. state. Leverage. So yes. I think there's sort of a gut check of is this. Does this feel like local support or not? Mm -hmm. or, is that accurate? Yeah. So the amount is not so critical as it is the. Um, I, I would doubt in the nineteen million dollar project they're going to yeah. cut two hundred thousand dollars out of the job because we didn't give them you know give them one hundred instead of three hundred. Yeah. And with Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity, not funding means what? Um, it depends on some of our other funding sources as well. So for the Glendale Road project, we applied for grants also from the Federal Home Loan Bank this fall, which is also competitive. We also applied for being a sub-grantee from a nonprofit in Vermont that is waiting on word on that grant. Um, so uh, if it was a reduced amount, but and we got our other funding, we'd probably figure out a way to fill that gap. If we don't get your funding and we don't get one of those other major grants, then it will probably mean postponing the project. It won't mean it ever get won't ever get done, but it might not get done as quickly. Um, the pro two projects right now um, have similar start dates on in the application. They're both fall of 2018, but the Garfield Avenue project we show taking a break over the winter. So we're just putting in the slab, and then the real construction starts in the spring. So the Glendale Road is really the one that's slated to go first in terms of overall construction. Okay, so let's uh, let's begin with uh, housing supportive services because I think that's going to uh, um, be something that, that a number of us would like to speak to. Is there a motion to uh, fund at a certain amount? It's make a motion about housing support services. I move we fund um, at the amount identified for one year, which I believe is $80,000. Second. Uh, so discussion. Oh, you did speak on the motion. Um, okay. So, and, and, and once again, we're going to discuss, we'll make a motion, and then it goes, the motion is to put it in the, sh in the shopping cart. Mm -hmm. So we can backtrack on any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, approving it means we're approving it into the shopping cart, just so we're all aware of that. So this is sort of an easier vote. Okay, uh, Chris? Um, I, I like all of the housing projects, and um, I have to say that, that my experience um, with the site visit last fall, or last spring for, for Sargent was, was really, was really Telling, yeah, yeah, really sort of shape, shape my thinking on, on the issue of housing moving forward. Um, and I, I don't want to minimize even slightly our need for 
uh, affordable housing in this community because I think it's a huge problem. Having said that, however, um, it, speaking to Mark at this point, um, we are not going to be make or break on any of these on any of these programs from from a purely dollar standpoint. That doesn't mean we shouldn't support them, and, and, and there are going to be others that I, I want to support. Um, but the reason I feel strongly about this one, and, and I would go the whole distance. I, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't feel bound by um, the, the agreement from three years ago about not funding, but I think it's unrealistic to expect that we're going to spend $240,000 on staff position. Um, but I, but I, I found the presentation that we got from, from, from Jennifer and from a couple of the residents um, last week, the two weeks ago, um, to be really, really compelling. And um, I, I, I think it would be unfortunate um, to pass up an opportunity to help people who are currently, um, you know, receiving assistance that they clearly need, um, but are in jeopardy of losing it because of um, their inability to, you know, um, pay their bills, and, and not because they can't pay them, but just because, uh, you know, from a from a you know from a from a day to day standpoint, it's it's a challenge for them to do it, and we're we're in a position where we can provide them with. Um, assistance that's, to my mind, critical to them maintaining their their their, their current accommodations, and uh, I think um, dislocating them um, for for what are, to my mind, you know, bureaucratic hurdles that 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 you know you and I would have an easier opportunity to overcome um, is is not is not it's not the kind of not the kind of community I want to live in. Um, I, I want us to be able to help the people who, who, who need our assistance, and I think that this is a good opportunity to do that. So I feel um, I'm, I'm glad to have an opportunity to to, to move for eighty thousand on this, and I and I wish we could do more. But I'm I'm, I'm really committed to to, to supporting this funding. Oh, uh, can can this, where do you get the eighty thousand? Mm, roughly one third, one year yeah. worth. Okay, so the, the request comes in at 247, 86, and 24, so it's a little less than a third. I think they broke it out. It's, yeah, I was going to say it's yeah. good. And it's broken out at 80? Is yeah. that 465? I'm sorry, say it again. 8465. 8465. Yeah. Uh, and? I'm not sure how much discussion you want about this. Yeah, now. I think a lot now. Okay. I feel like I should be saying what. Chris said, but I'm not going to say what Chris said. Um, I uh, am abs absolutely believe in the value of this program. My concern is um, I don't see that there's realistic prospects for continued funding apart from CPC. And so I think if you know, it, it's kind of a sad to say, well, we'll extend it for a year, but. I, I think at the end of that year, it's either going to be uh, community preservation funds or it's going to be nothing. The message was given really clearly three years ago. I'm not as convinced about how intense the efforts to fundraise were, but regardless, they really don't have much by way of, of prospects. There's the possibility that the housing authority when they see their budget might be able to come up with some. There was a request to um, uh, the management company for another of the, the, the for, of Meadowbrook, but that's not going to even if even if they give five thousand or ten thousand, it's not going to come anywhere close to what's necessary to continue funding it. Um, we've got an awful lot of very valuable, other very valuable projects, and I and I'm I'm just worried that it's it's. Um, it's important to do, but maybe CPC is not what should be coming to. We got we got it off the ground. We gave it the opportunity to demonstrate its importance and its effectiveness, and the constituents um, of the, uh, the beneficiaries of that program, the various um, apartment complexes and so forth, haven't stepped up to the plate, and I don't see it happening. So, so Linda, are you? Are you supportive so of, of, a, of a year? I am conflicted. 
um, I wrote down in my little cheat sheet for a year, but I'm I'm not certain that I would vote for it. I have because I have those reservations, and I think we're just we're just continuing it for a year, and then the program's going to die. And I'm sorry to say I have to feel the same way. And I was so impressed. Well, with, we'll see another. I was so impressed with what they did. But yes, absolutely, the absolutely, and it's made difference in people's lives. And yeah. uh, when I first read the application, I was I was sure oh, we have so much to fund and not, not money. This is a really easy one to knock off, and that would be easy to say no to. Uh, and then I understood more about it, and especially I think the presentation was I agree very. Compelling, and um, I also feel maybe because I wasn't here three years ago, I feel a little responsibility to that group. Uh, no offense to anyone here, um, <laughs> but I understand completely the administrative reasons why it's sort of on the bounds of what's allowed. To me, uh, I think it put in a very human terms the fact that. Let me back up. My bias is, I think, is to fund permanent things or semi-permanent, as permanent as we can. However, hearing people talk about the actual activity that happens as a result of this funding, I'm actually uh, less convinced that these are all uh, processes that we would have an easy time negotiating. I don't know that I would have such an easy time you know, figuring out how to get a, you know, the, 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 the program already, you know, the, the rent program set up and yeah. I mean and, and, and in a sense you know I wish there were you know fixers in the DMV you know, to, to some of us all do these things but this is a group that especially needs that help and I think it really strikes at the very heart of what is community preservation it's preserving the communities that are in these, these places and if we build the houses and the people cannot the communities that live in the houses cannot stay in them it's it's really diminishing the uh, the, you know, the effectiveness of all of our that are falling in this category, I think. So I, I agree if, if that there's a very real possibility that if we don't fund it, it will die. To me, that's a reason to fund it. And I would be happy to do it on a one-year basis as long as I'm on the committee, actually. So I would have heard more about it. You know, if we had to approve it every year, for we'll one year, I would, I would be in favor of that. Jeff, your housing expertise? Well, um, I wrote down on my cheat sheet, um, funded for a year. So I basically support Chris's motion. And um, the testimony two weeks ago kind of reinforced in me um, that affordable housing is a little bit different, at least the, what I see of it on the, on the housing authority, is those, those testimonies, we see that every month. I, I get... Um, briefings from the executive director of the housing authority about certain case situations that happens every day of every week um, those people two weeks ago were very representative the way I look at it is um, this is a little bit different for me than than preserving a piece of land that's static or preserving a building that's static um, yes you have to upkeep those but when you're dealing with affordable housing, you have to really um, service it and maintain it on a daily basis. And for me, I, th I thought, well, when I, when I read the proposal, it was, it was um, in light of everything else we have to consider. It's like we can't do um, full funding, but if we fund one year, it's part of the equation for me. It, this, is, this is the kind of stuff that keeps affordable housing affordable and the housing authority and some of the other community groups um, no one group can take on this responsibility by themselves this is another another asset that will help tackle that problem I thought the um, the testimony two weeks ago only uh, reinforced the way I was um, initially coming into it so um, I'm in favor of, of uh, funding it for a year, and um, a lot of things can happen in a year. Um, it could get worse, it could get better, and I don't really know, but I, I'd say for right now, uh, I'm in favor of funding it uh, one more year, and I think the earlier discussion we had where the, the funding is through August of next year, 
if we tack on a year to that, then that, that buys us a little more time for something to break. And I am going to do everything possible with the uh, small amount of influence I have with the Housing Authority to, if, if we can find the funds to support this, uh, we should do it because if you read the proposal, um, a lot of the beneficiaries are um, housing authority people and um, the, one of the attorneys uh, used by the housing authority wrote a letter of support in the back of the proposal. So I'm in favor of one year. Other folks? What would happen if it was partially funded for one year? You'd have a, you'd have part time person. Yeah. Well, they're going to be able to extend a six month contract that would get us, that could come from August to, what does that come to? January? Yeah. So we could revisit it when they were almost about to break their contract a year from now. But, yeah. So it would keep someone on full time for another six months if we funded. $40,000. Is that what you're getting at? I'm not saying I'm, 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 I'm not suggesting that's a good idea. I'm just, just answering the question. Posing the question, you know, whether it would, again, provide some incentive. You know, that if this person has been in this position for three years and these housing um, property managers aren't, uh, they probably are seeing the benefit of this, right? Because they have tenants or not, they don't have to evict and are being responsible about paying the rent and so forth. Um, you know, they've, after three years, they've sort of gotten used to having that support. Um, you know, maybe with half that support, they would be willing to finance it. But nobody looks like they <laughs> think that would ever happen. So it's just an idea. Other comments on this, folks who haven't spoken? Okay, so that's, uh, there's a motion to fund $80,000 for housing supportive services uh, for a, uh, and we will put the stipulation on as a one-year contract, is that correct? Okay, are we ready to vote? Again, this goes into the shopping cart uh, and uh, to be reconsidered. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? So it passes eight to one. All right. Uh, moving on, let's go to the two uh, Habitat for Humanity uh, properties, if we can. Um, maybe starting with Glendale Road, since we've spoken a little bit more about that. Is there a motion for that? We make a motion to. Um fully fund the Glendale Road Homes project for the $60,000. There a second? Second. Okay, discussion? I think we've already had some preliminary discussion on this um, already tonight. Um, Habitat has a solid um, track record. Um, we were already earlier invested in purchasing um, the land for that project, so um, when I read this, um, for me it was a no-brainer. I just think it's the right thing to do. Linda, so housing person? Other um, housing person? I, I agree and I was uh, really pleased to see that there had been efforts to look at different models of financing the, to, to partner with the, uh, with the Vermont modular home construction to, to uh, to just really kind of change up the, mm -hmm. the, the habitat model, consuming how the energy efficiency, and mm -hmm. trying to increase the scale of the work that they're doing. And I, I'd like to get behind that. Good, good, yeah. Other discussion? Are we good to vote on this? Okay, so the motion on the table is fully funding the Glendale Road Habitat for Humanity for 60000 which is the full extent of their ask. All those in favor? All those opposed? All right. Uh, sticking with Habitat for Humanity, looking at the Garfield 
Avenue Small Home, which was a single project, correct? Is there a motion for this? I move to fund um, Garfield Avenue housing project for 20000 Is there a second? Second. Okay, discussion? Back to our housing people, Linda? Uh, it's, it's hard to resist. Uh, I, I have a question about the timing, but it's, it's hard and whether we, you know, if we're squeezed for 20000 whether we put this off, but it almost seems like why put it off next year? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. uh, it's, it's responsive to the, the, the competition, uh, this, this, um, the, the small lot approach. I, I, again, it's innovative, it's, it's a different approach. Yeah. Finish off, finish off that the Garfield Avenue project that was started a long time ago and bring all that to completion. Chair? Everything Linda said, I, li I like the innovation. <laughs> I like the relatively um, small amount of money we're being asked to contribute to this in light of everything else that we have on our plate. Um, I, I think it's a very good, very good project. Chris, is that a chewing on glasses or is that a... <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm, I'm there. I'm with them. I, I like this project. Anybody else speaking on this? Would go? Goodness, we're sipping right along here. Uh, so the motion is to fully fund the Garfield. Uh, have that a few hands. You know, humanity at 20,000. All those in favor? All those opposed? All right. Got that, Sarah? All right, so why don't we move on to the Sergeant House expansion, the Valley CDC project. Um, the initial request, again, to refresh our memory, was $500,000. That came in last year. We funded 50000 preliminary. They are back now at with uh, 450000 Also keeping in mind, we can dip from both in historic uh, to our, our uh, mandate reserve as well as affordable housing on this one. Is there a motion for this? Um, okay. Yep. We have to actually make the motion. <laughs> I have to make the motion. I move that okay. we focus on the Sergeant House expansion for the full amount. Is there a second? Full amount? That's what I said. I'll second. Okay, so 450,000. Uh, discussion. Uh, I can't see doing the full amount. It, there's just too many other projects. I would come in at two hundred thousand. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I second it because I I want to I want to move it along, but I I'm not sure we have four hundred and fifty at at this point anyhow. Um, so I'm I'm willing to talk about another number, but I'm. I, I continue to be very supportive of this project, and, I, and I'd like to okay. I'd like to see oh us to, I'd like to see us to continue to support it, and you know maybe maybe we, we look at a number at later a final number later at deliberations when we see where we are as far as as far as the other things that we want to do. That's yeah, fine. I'm absolutely supportive of the project. It's the number that's the yeah. Issue. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. So the general consensus that we are supportive of this. Project. Is anyone? Is there any disagreement on this? Okay. The issue is how much, uh, given what else we're going to be funding at this point. Um, <laughs> excuse me, um, Jeff. Any other comments as a housing person on this? Uh, I'm I'm very supportive of it. I like the dual the dual notion that it's it's uh, single room occupancy and it's also historic preservation. Mm -hmm. Um, right smack downtown. Uh, we've already contributed to it before. Um, I was on the tour a year or so ago. Um, I, I, I just had a question about what the number is, and I don't think we can determine that until we go through all this other stuff, but I'm in support of it. Any other comments? Uh, I have a comment about this because <clears throat> in my mind it's balanced against the Village Hill apartments other large ask so I think every time I look at the numbers it's uh, how much should go 
to Sergeant House and how much did Village Hill. So I think if I don't know if it's confusing the issue to bring up that those discussing those two together, but to me that's the bulk of our money right there. So we ha we have to work within those two proposals. So. So, so we've, what we've done so far with the three projects is, you know, we have 168 on the affordable housing reserve, and with the three projects, we've already hit uh, 60. Um, and in Sergeant House, I, I, I'm having a hard time seeing those. I get that they're balanced against each other in a way because they're large numbers, but Sergeant House, again, is also historic. So yeah, you might want to weight that heavier that than, sure. There's piece of that and, exactly. it, and it's hard for me to balance those two or to see them in some way as, as equals just because they're asking us well, for I think if, if if we spend money on the sergeant house we're not going to have it to spend on the village hill so you have to kind of decide what, what your preference is I, I look at the overall project budget for these things yeah. it's a 19 million dollar project and we're getting two percent of it so if we give one percent or three quarters of a percent does that make any difference right. to anybody I mean, it's better it makes it a little harder for the community builders to put the numbers together and, and, and on the performer finish but uh, I think it's it's a more significant amount of money for us on the project yeah. uh, what, what, when I was as I said before what I was doing when I was looking at these was thinking about the timing issues mm -hmm. and um, I, I see the Sergeant House expansion as as really potentially going this next round. So this this is yeah. our opportunity, really, to, to provide the funding to give it the um, to, to to tell the state that we, we really are valuing this. And I agree with Jeff. It's right downtown. It's mm -hmm. great for an SRO. It's, it's got all kinds of positive stuff. Um, the Village Hill. Is, is not ready to go. They, they they don't even know really for sure what they're going to be invited to submit in this next round. So I don't think we're saying what I had in my mind was putting in a token amount, just like we had done with Sergeant House, to, to show that the committee supported it. But <coughs> we don't have the funds, and the timing is not such that they really need the funds, except as a as a preliminary show of support. So I was willing to balance it more heavily in, in favor of Sergeant House giving, given where it is in oh, its, yeah. its life uh, life's span mm -hmm. and um, give a, a, a token support to, to Village Hill. Has there ever been an instance where you have not funded but said strongly encouraged reapplication? Yes. Sure. 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 Yes. Sure. But, the, but, you, yes. but when they submit their application to the state, if they're invited to, Village Hill won't, won't have yeah. um, anything from from, from CBC. Just back when the Sergeant House came last round, and we gave him a small amount of money and said, "Come back next time. Right. This is next time. Mm -hmm. Go for that." Mm -hmm. But, but, but we've done the same thing with, with, with zero funding and saying, "You know, we we love your project. We just can't fund it this time. Come back." Yeah. And Sarah's done a good, nice job of encouraging applicants mm -hmm. to come forward. Yeah, it's like because I would echo the comments about the Sergeant House from a historic preservation point of view. It's um, it's a really key uh, structure and that whole entry to the city from the east and the whole Pomeroy Terrace National Register district that is going through. Mm -hmm. um, the historic right now is really trying to improve that whole quarter. Um, so that's really critical. I think it's a sort of bonus. It's a double. Effect. Uh, yeah, Jeff, this is sort of a general comment. Um, I think it was Todd Ware um, who two weeks ago said, and I didn't follow up with Sarah to find out how accurate it was, but he said that every housing project that had come before this committee had been funded. And I think he said 17 of them or something like that. Um, I don't. I don't know if I made the 17 number up. But it was 17 percent. Oh, 17 percent was the percentage. Was lower, but so numerically we had supported a lot of project. We hadn't done it at a high level. I, 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 I'm not all that concerned about the percentage, but I think the fact that we continue to support projects, at least you know nominally, it, as a show of support, because 
in, you know, in virtually all of these, we're not going to be even close to the make or break people. And so when we do that, we are effectively saying to everybody, we like this project, we're going to do what we can to help them out, but we, we, know, we realize that we, we're not the tipping point on these things. So I think that, you know, giving them, a, a, you know, a, a nominal amount and, and, and it's not just, you know, words of encouragement. It shows people that we're, that we're there, mm -hmm. that, that we want to be there. So you're looking through the history of our housing projects, this 300, 350, it would be the biggest housing award you've ever given. What is the biggest one we've given so far? 300, to yeah. Lumber Yard and 300 to Pleasant Street. Actually, it's 450, right, is what we're talking about. Well, it'll be 500 total. Right. Yeah. So 300 has been the biggest we've ever given. Because of the last. Yeah. Uh, if it's okay with the committee, can I ask the CDC person to speak if they have anything to add? Is that all right? Sure. CDC person? Um, yeah, I just, for, the, for clarification. I'm sorry, what's your name? Laura Baker. I, I, from I apologize. <laughs> just, um, the lumber yard actually asked was 500000 and the committee gave 300000 um, We asked high on Surgeon House for a number of reasons, but a lot of it had to do with it being both a historic preservation, which is adding money to the budget, as well as a community housing project. We're prepared to take less. <laughs> um, and so, you know, if I had to throw a number out, I'd, I'd, I'd look for 300,000, but of course, respect the conversation here about having so many applications. I think with Village Hill, um, you know, we were hoping to at least get 50. Um, without that, it's pretty hard to compete. I think we will absolutely be going into the February round. I don't see any barriers mm -hmm. to doing that. Um, and this is a big, significant project, and it would, it, given the history of Northampton with contributing to affordable housing, I think DHC would immediately go, well, what's up with this? Like, why isn't the town supporting it? Um, and my hope would be that if 50 or more could go in now, and there could be an open door to come back um, for a future ask, because I think even though it's a small part of the budget, you know, again, Northampton has a reputation. You, you are known to have a certain amount of money. Um, and so there is there is a proportion that's kind of looked for in terms of what is the local match, what's a credible local match for a 65-unit, $20 million project in the state of Massachusetts, in the city of Northampton. Um, but it definitely doesn't have to all come in one batch from one round. Um, I'm happy to answer other questions. Any other questions for her at this point? And once again, just to reiterate, you're always welcome to come back to the project um, time and time again. So that's it. there's an open door. Thank you. Uh, further discussion on uh, Sergeant House. The motion was fully funding at 450,000. Um, what I'm hearing is that folks are uncomfortable with that large amount. Uh, did uh, Andy want to uh, change your? Oh, about three hundred thousand. Okay. Uh, now knowing that we already put in fifty. 50. That's right. And the ask I'm hearing was for three hundred. I'm trying. Put my two cents. Well, it's your two cents. Go ahead. I, I, it's fine. Uh, so you want to you want to keep it at three hundred, or do you want to go with two fifty, which would give our total into three hundred? Which would match the other. Which would match the other high. Yeah. Well, I got to go for 350, but I'm perfectly happy to go for 300. <laughs> so the motion is uh, an additional 300,000. Is that correct? Okay. Any further discussion on that? Again, we can modify this as it as it comes up. Okay. The motion is. I would second that motion. Okay. A second. So we're down from 450 to uh, to 300, which would actually bring us up to 350. Uh, any additional discussion on that new proposal as amended by Anne? Okay, all those in favor? All those opposed? Okay, into the shopping cart at 300,000. Uh, boy, this is actually going much smoother than I, than I thought. Into the hard votes yet. No. <laughs> no, that's true. Be nice to everybody votes. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so next up, uh, Village Hill Apartments. Uh, at three thousand dollars, is there a motion? Move we fund it for a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. 
So village of apartments coming in at one hundred thousand dollars. Discussion. I support nominal, but nominal to me is 50, not 100, but we'll get to that later. I agree. I agree too, and isn't that what was done with Sergeant House in the last round? Yes, it was. Uh, Chris? Um, yeah, that's what was done with Sergeant House in a budget of 70,000. Right. We had a lot less money to pay for it, to play with, and I, I, I made that motion, and I would have gone considerably higher, even for nominal. Um, it was just it was a, it was a resource issue, so just Thank you give, me, just give you a little context. context. Yeah. Thank you. So I have to admit, before we got here, you know, like everybody, I played on the spreadsheet, and I'm still playing on the spreadsheet. And one of the games I played was, what if I added all the undesignated to the housing? How much would we have in total if we had said, let's put all that into housing? And now I'm adding up the numbers we've put in so far and comparing them to that total, and the hundred gets us pretty close to what that would look like if we used those two pieces of our of our um, of our funding. Housing and all the undesignated? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, right okay, now we can throwing, play with we can play with sergeant house. Like, I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. So if you take all of the sergeant house for housing and not split it. Yeah, exactly. And I didn't do anything to sergeant house is historic. No I know that we could. So but just I've been trying to think about how you know, aside from thinking about the individual projects, part of what I did before we came was I started thinking about the types of projects. Mm -hmm. You know, fifty percent of fifty-seven percent of our requests were in housing. Could we could we fund all of them? No, but could we we weight heavily into housing? And so that's what I've been sort of sitting here doing. And the hundred thousand fits well with weighting heavily into housing, affordable housing. So I, that that's my rationale and saying. You know, I hear the nominal piece, but I think 100 is nominal if, you know, you're, if you're looking at their total budget, and it says we support this. So we're up to we're up to 560 right now. If we were to accept yeah, the 100,000, exactly. yeah, yeah. we would have 865 to, to dispense. Thinking about nominal grants, the courthouse asked for 140 thousand dollars as a nominal. We gave them 100 thousand dollars as a nominal yeah. for. Yeah. For, for church now. The damn boot, I'd we'd have another hundred times. Of course it is! Okay, further discussion on uh, Village Hill. Okay, the motion on the floor is 100,000 for Village Hill apartments. All those in favor? All those opposed? So that is seven to two. Got that, sir? Yes. And again, that's into the into the shopping cart at a hundred thousand. <coughs> All right, moving right along, um, we can do with conservation ones or the historic preservation. And then we've already sort of dealt with historic. Let's move on to that uh, as well. Um, let's go with St. John's Episcopal Church as the next really big ask. Uh, is there a motion on the floor? Linda. I moved to fund St. John's at 150000 Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Uh, specifically, how much was the... 297, I think. 297 is the ask. Is that all to uh, the sprinkler system? Not narrowly to the sprinkler. I thought it was also some masonry work that was associated with that. Okay. So we're to the discussion thing. So I have a few questions about this project. Um, and again, just I'm trying to bring myself up to speed. Um, I was not convinced, either in the application or in the presentations that were given, that by doing this project, it was going to greatly increase their service to the community. Uh, the, you know, the, the amount of programming they were going to do, the number of people they were going to be servicing. Um, I realize it's important to preserving the longevity of the building, but that was a huge question that was in my mind, and it still remains. Um, and then second of all, I think um, 
from a historic preservation point of view, uh, the way they're going about the restoration of this building just raises a lot of questions in my mind from a professional point of view. Such as? Um, I, I, this is a building that's kind of been um, copped together organically. If people went on the tour, you could sort of see these uh, rooms kind of patched together. And um, they're going to be adding more space to the building rather than kind of correcting the space that they have. So, you know, typically in historic preservation, you're trying to sort of peel back the, um, the contemporary uh, pieces that have been added and then rethink it and maybe, in their case, make better use, more, more efficient use of the space that they have rather than putting more space into it. Um, so those two items were just a big question. Other folks? Um, I, I guess I, go, going back to the discussion about the, the funding, the, the housing support services, I really saw this in part as, as making it possible for the community support services to, to continue and um, the, the thought of having to carry people down into that basement area in order to, to provide them the programming and, and um, uh, the, the uh, risk to safety and, and the indignity of that. Um, Inadequacy of the of the kitchen and their desire to expand the um, food food programming that they do there. I, I just thought this this is a an important way to contribute to the services that they really are providing to the community. And it's once you do this, it's going to be ongoing. It's not going to be something that's going to need to come back year after year after year for ongoing. It's it's to to get the structure in place make it safe, and then it can go forward and do what it does. And I can't speak to the, the preservation issues, really. Linda, your, your um, motion was 445, is that right? 150. 150, and the sprinkler system's coming in at 145. Yeah, it was it was a round number. <laughs> you want to make it 145. And you would limit it to the sprinkler system? No, it was just given uh, the other good projects, I just, I, I felt that there was some capacity for them to continue their fundraising and they might be able to uh, make up that difference. Yes. Um, I think, first of all, I, I'm supportive of this project for, but not necessarily for the reasons that, that have been mentioned so far. I, I do, I do like with First Churches, um, feel that this is a this is an organization that um, it's a religious you know organization, but but it plays a much bigger role in our community. And I think I think um, uh, I, I want to support them to reflect that. The number itself, though, um, I think that that's a very flexible number. I don't think we necessarily have to do it. I certainly don't believe we have to do it at the full request. I'm not even sure we have to go as high as 150. Um, I think that the sprinkler system was identified as something that we could fund because that's what they're reading of what CPC funds mm -hmm. can fund, fund. Um, and that it's a somewhat arbitrary number. Um, or to put it another way, money is fungible and this is the part that we could support and we're part of a much sure. big, much bigger project. Mm -hmm. And so that, you know, identifying that component as opposed to another one is, is a way they can present it to us. Um, and, and get it, you know, get it before us in, in, in a way that, that we can we can approach it. But I'm not I'm not necessarily committed to that number. Um, so I'm not committed to the one. Yeah, thing. yeah, no, it's I, just some I get some that. level of support. I get and, that. Yes. Um, but I'm they happy to adjust yeah, it. They, I, I I I do think that they I do think that they deserve our support. Um, I'm just going to have to wait and see where I want to go as far as the final. If folks have the proposal in front of them, uh, page 34 is where their budget is from uh, Dennis Sullivan looking at what they thought the historic preservation component of their, uh, their and, and how they arrived at this um, 
I, I don't want to say it's a historical accident, but it, 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 it happens to be that the church communities are the ones that came together to provide these social services. There's no particular reason that there needs to be a con you know a congregational version of feeding on one night and a Episcopal version of another night, and uh, you know every denomination having repeating all these services, other than the fact that people who are in those denominations have their personal connections, and that's the method in which they do it. So I, I, maybe I'm not expressing this well. You know, if, 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 if Northampton was, could get organized in a sense and like find a way to fund you know, the feeding of the needy in a centralized way, not every denomination would have to repeat all of these facilities and, and put all the accessibility and sprinklers and all the things that go along with it. Other than the fact that there happen to be all these denominations of churches that are doing this work. I know we're not going to just erase all that history in one day, but I think um, for people who are not of those denominations or any denomination, that sort of really screams out as sort of a sort of head scratcher. Other comments about St. John? Yes, no? Okay, so the motion on the floor is 150000 to fund historic preservation at St. John's out of an ask of 297000 Okay, this is the shopping cart. All those in favor? Ooh, all those opposed? Uh, abstaining. So that's a one, two, seven to one. Got that? Okay, so at this point, it is out of the shopping cart. <laughs> okay, so keeping in the historic uh, preservation line, we're on to the, um, the Academy of Music. Uh, 99,000. Is there a motion? <laughs> no. Is there a motion? Come on, folks. Someone do something. I'll move. We fund it for 99,000. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it so we can talk about it. Oh, good. Uh, okay, so let's see. For those looking uh, at stuff on page four of the budget that I have anyway, is the breakdown. Mm -hmm. If in fact we're looking at um, at uh, at partial funding. Uh, I'll, I'll just relate one one funny thing. Um, so I go to I go to the academy a lot, and in the last few weeks I went to. Uh, Peter Wolf, I hope you remember Jay Giles, was really yeah. like yeah. my first. Uh, Are you kidding? I, uh, it's the first concert I ever took my high school girlfriend to. And, <laughs> you know, people were, you know, it was quite the scene. And now Peter Wolf in his 70s dance around. Right? And, and then two weeks, just this last weekend, I went and saw uh, My Fair Lady. And it's just like, oh, you know, <laughs> Jay Giles and My Fair Lady. <laughs> it's a beautiful place. Uh, all right. Let's see, Martha. Historic preservation. Want to speak for this one? Uh, just uh, uh, for a point of reference, sir. Do you know how much we've already supported this? Uh, At least twice. Correct. Curtain. Curtain was the last one, and we did all the seating and the uh, yeah. a lot of the a lot of the main auditorium. And they also benefited from, I think, not historic preservation, but the most recent work on Pulaski Park. Yeah. Or there's that oh, backside yeah. work yeah. that we had a lot of conversation yes. about. Why is it? was yeah. of benefit to, to the, the So the marquee is so it's found four different, I'm just adding, so four different projects. Seven hundred fifty-nine thousand. So, um, I, I, I think that the academy is a wonderful building, and um, it's certainly work preservation. Obviously, it's iconic and it's important in the whole downtown and the draws people, but all that. Um, again, from a preservation point of view, um, I wasn't really convinced by the information that we're 
was provided to us. This was um, really being dealt with in a um, from a historic preservation point of view. Mm -hmm. they, they've got a lighting issue in the theater, and the bathroom is shabby, and we're being kind of asked to address that. Um, I think if they were doing things that were really preservation related, I would feel a little differently about it, although that we supported them so much. Um, also, I, I find it hard to believe that they can't raise funds for this organization um, from other sources for things like this, that, especially if it's accessibility related. Um, I would think that they would have been able to raise additional funds, and I don't know what attempt they made to do that. So I, I would not be supportive of this application. Did this, this came through the, your uh, department, though? Is that correct? With a uh, through the historical commission? Yeah. Yeah. No. It did not. It's, it's interior. It's interior. Yeah. And and they're uh, on the state register, so that this doesn't have to come in for a separate eligibility check. Okay. okay. Other discussion? Yes. I'm glad that Martha put in words what I was thinking <laughs> better than I could. Um, <laughs> the way I was going to phrase it was. Given the resources available, this go around, um, my bar is pretty high, and this one doesn't get over it. Yeah, I agree. I should say, since we also just heard about um, a historic preservation project trying to go in through sprinklers, I think we heard that they're going, they're planning a sprinkling a sprinkler project. I guess for the, didn't we hear her say that in the future to Jeffra? that they're going to be coming back or, or they're. Well, we heard so much that. <laughs> right. You know, they they don't have adequate sprinkling currently, or at least they didn't when they came in for the first day. Right. I thought we heard to say that this run that, that they were going to be coming back with for sprinkler. And to my mind, that just seems like a lack of uh, prioritization that you need mm -hmm. to spend money on. You know, finding some kind of you know, redoing some kind of stenciling uh, that you know, sprinkler. Well, here, you know, this seems odd. And, and I also think for, for the average, or even above average, uh, guest to the Academy of Music, I, I don't know that these things are going to significantly enhance the experience and you know, I think it's The handicap after might. That, that's true. That's true. Although, the handicap, this is not, as I understand it, this is just for the drawings to do the handicap after. No, it's uh, prepare. Well, it's prepare for it. Yeah, I think there was new new flooring. Right. The drawings um, are for the bathroom downstairs. Right. 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 Yeah. Uh, but the, but it's the upstairs. It's, right. it's not currently inaccessible, but they are doing work to an accessible bathroom. The work won't make improvements to an accessible bathroom. Yeah. 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 It will not make it any more accessible. It will just make it look nice. Okay, other discussion on this? Okay, so the motion on the floor is to approve $99,000 for the Academy of Music. All those in favor? All those opposed? All right, vote to nine. Um, all right, on to the last three. How are we doing on time? We're hanging in there. I can't see that. Eight thirty. Eight thirty. That's not too bad. Moving right along. Um, can we have a quick update on someone who's calculating this? How much money do we have in our? Five hundred sixty-seven. And um, just also again, educational aid. Um, the Academy of Music is but if we didn't spend it it would remain there even if we spend out the rest of the undesignated funding yeah. so we're an eligible project it could not go there okay but we'll, we'll spend it <laughs> <laughs> well, well i was going to make a point i think if you're looking at sergeant house the academy in st john's it's kind of a brainer that the sergeant house is going to have the greatest impact both yeah. from a housing point of view but also Preservation in that area of time. Okay, so why don't we leave the uh, Northampton Conservation Commission 
Oh, I just want to say slush fund, but that's really inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, open space fund. <laughs> what do we call it, Jared? Slush fund. <laughs> uh, so let's move on to uh, the rail trail improvements, of which there were two. Remember the extension, which was yeah. in at uh, 50,000, mm -hmm. and then the um, the 200,000 for the Lip Park access ramps, so it's a total of uh, 250. Sarah, is there any movement, did, did, for, forgive me for forgetting, is there any grants that are coming in or not on these? This one wasn't, so the, the 50,000 recreational trails grant, I think it says in there, was awarded uh, the Land and Water Conservation Fund. Has been announced, yeah. Okay. That so probably won't come until. And the 50, December. for the bike trail, the 50,000 would go toward what? That one was for the extension. Okay. Um, but the extension itself was a hundred thousand. So this, so the yeah. that, yeah. That so, that's, so that's a, this ask is a match for that. Okay. So if we don't get fifty thousand for the bike trail, they we turn away the fifty thousand. Or Wayne would have to come up with some other place to get the match. Okay. Okay. Uh, so should we look at these as two separate projects? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so let's begin with the two hundred thousand. Let's begin with fifty thousand for the um, for the uh, extension. Is there a motion? Yeah, I move we put fifty thousand in for the extension. Please. I second. Second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Discussion. Julie, you want to start us off? God's <laughs> sake! Uh, finish. Look, we've got a we've got a tunnel. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tom was thrilled, yeah. and we've got this little stretch, yeah. and it's a Do really it. little stretch, and it's fifty thousand, and there's a there's a rent sitting there. I think this is waiting for. It. Yeah, okay. Okay. I'd also say that it's encouraging to the people in Williamsburg yes. to yes. know that we're ex finishing our portion, and it might oh, spur yeah. on more yeah. movement by Williamsburg to finish their section. Yep, mm -hmm. or just continue start it. it. Start it. <laughs> start it. <laughs> right, we'll stop that chatting. Yeah. Other discussion on this? Recreation loves it. Recreation loves it. We had a lot of bike trail conversations last time. Uh, any other discussion? No? Good to go. Okay, so motion on the table was to fully fund that request, which is the connector to Williamsburg uh, at 50000 all those in favor? Oppose, nine to zip. Let's move on to the 200,000 for the Look Park access ramp. Is there a motion? Uh, Julia, can you make a motion? Uh, I can make a motion to fund for 200,000 to get our conversation going. Okay, is there a second? To open to I second it to keep the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Julie, you want to start us off with this as the record guru? Um, <laughs> who would you prefer? So the red guru says we have we have a lot of conversations in our in our recreation commission about the accessibility of all our recreation spaces and park spaces to people of the city. In an ideal city, you have. Uh, park space within a 10 minute walk of every house and you have a bike path that has a, an entree for every person within a half a mile of it. That's the intent. That's an ideal city. Um, on the other hand, we have a really functioning, lovely bike trail that's high use bike trail and that's pretty exciting. Uh, the spots, I think everybody's seen the spot that Wayne's mm -hmm. talking about? Mm -hmm. So everyone goes up there anyway. Mm -hmm. you know, at least one of them has it. There's a dirt path. People have created what mm -hmm. my favorite way calls them, but they're created trails mm -hmm. there. And um, whether this happens or not, people will be creating their trails to the to the bike path. So we know it's going to get used. This isn't that far away from the entrance to the park. So no, it's just it's not. It's just. It's like across from the VA. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. Not that far away. Yeah. No, it's, no, it's, yeah. So it's based on the back of the park. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
Julia's our bike crew and rec person. That was not a ringing endorsement. Of <laughs> <laughs> you know what I feel really, and, and I looked at this, you know, again, last night and this morning, and I, I feel really strongly about finishing that bike trail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my strongest feeling. Yeah. and that creating new access ramps is a, is a lovely idea. Uh, but as you said, you can get into it in the park yep. fairly easily. Right. Yep. Um, and, the, and the trail through the park for the bikes is really well demarcated. Yeah. And, yeah. and, I mean, and I'm separate from the cars. Yep. Yeah. And I'm one of the bikers who's been you know, yelled at by some people in the neighborhood for doing it on the dirt. <laughs> um, I love the video. We're not telling. Yeah. Well, you're not telling. <laughs> um, other discussion on this? Okay, the proposal on uh, the uh, table is 200000 for the Look Park access ramp, which is fully funding that project. And, and so there's nothing we need to, excuse me, we need to know about uh, grants on this or. Mm -hmm. Anything. Oh, it hasn't been announced yet. So there's a pending mm -hmm. application, but the state has not made their award announcement yet. Uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? Okay, we, Julie, was that a yes to oppose? No, I'm going to abstain. Abstain, okay. So that's a zero to eight to one on that. Okay. So, someone correct me if I'm wrong, we're at 610000 with one more project to go. Is that correct? Two. 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 You're right, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so again, let's leave the Cons Comp Fund for, for last. Um, so we have two uh, open space acquisitions. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and Sarah, is there, I, I was a little confused in terms of the Audubon ask, the non audible ask, remember that? With Wayne, it was like, well, it's 166, but with, it could be 125. Can you clarify yeah. that for us? And is there, um, are there grants coming in on this as well, part grants or emails that we need to know about? Are there Rocky Hall? No. Um, do people remember that weird thing with Audubon? What does anyone remember? I think, what? I think it was that he committed to asking for that higher amount, and Audubon pledged that if, if the committee was unable to fund it, that they would make up the difference. But he had to come forward in good faith and ask us for that higher amount. Okay. So without Audubon, <laughs> I have down 125000 Right. I got, that, that, I got that, that, too. that, too. Okay. So theoretically, Sarah, am I wrong in thinking that we could fund this for 125? That is the notes that I have. That is the notes. Okay, and that would get both of both um, open space acquisitions, correct, Mineral Hills, and the Rocky Hill addition. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. For 125. Yes. The 125, uh, 412. Do both of them because it's fi it's fifty thousand for the Mineral Hills conservation area, and then the, the rest of that would be uh, for the uh, Rocky Hill Greenway. Okay, so so the one twenty five is with with Audubon kicking in a little bit more, right? Okay. Do we have a motion here. Is no, we do not have a motion. Are you want to make one? I'll make a motion that we. Uh, Fund uh, both those purchases for the amount of 125, 412. Second. Okay, discussion? I'm proud to live in a city where a quarter of the land is in the public domain. Very, very exciting. And I think these land acquisitions are ones that Wayne and Jack and the rest of the Conscom folks a lot of effort into and our ability to remove them from the pressures of development is, is incredibly important, particularly in this day and age of climate change and threats to diversity and all that stuff. It's great to have the historical preservation piece in that Mineral Hills for those of us, I guess almost everybody went up there to mm -hmm. see that 
the, the yeah, mine, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and it's neat to have that little bit of our history incorporated in that. That's very pretty exciting. Other discussion? Okay, so the proposal on the table is $125,412 uh, for two open space acquisitions, uh, Mineral Hills and the and Rocky Hills. All those in favor? All those opposed? So 920. All right, let's do a quick little math here. 125 plus 610 is 7. 35, is that right? 735, 877. 735, 877. Thank you, Julia. Um, uh, so last but not least, we're looking at the CONSCOM, uh, CONSCOM fund. The request came in for 50,000. Is there a motion? Move fund for 50,000. Second? Second. 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 <laughs> Well, this is uh, a regular conversation that this group has about conservation fund. I think we've all seen it in action, so we know it's a useful instrument in Wayne's arsenal. And it's necessary to have something in it. Um, and I'm glad we're taking it up later in the process so that we can see what, what we're ending up with, because it's it is a flexible number. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what s specifics he has in mind, and I guess he has to come to us if he's going to spend more than ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars on an mm -hmm. individual mm -hmm. project. So we'll we'll hear about that if he uses it for more than for a particular project. I, I think I'm remembering that um, there's a backlog of the conservation. Restrictions. Restrictions for about thirty thousand. Yeah. I don't know if he'd spend thirty thousand on those, but trying to catch up on those. Yeah, he's, they have been trying to them. update all the restrictions. When they buy a piece of land, they have to part of it to preserve it is to get a, a, a restriction, a conservation restriction placed on it, which costs something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like legal fees and surveying. Mm -hmm. Yeah somebody to hold that, hold that. Sarah, any uh, news on this or things you want to speak to us about? Nope. Yeah. Given that, you know, the conversations we've had with CDA overall in the state, and the state match and setup, uh, as well as bonding uh, capacity, I think this money is, in a sense, seed money for projects acquisition projects that come before us later. Not always, but a lot of times. So I would be actually happy covering this a little bit lower, just given the fact that our capacity to actually acquire sites is also going to be lower. And I'm perfectly happy leaving more money for projects that we're all going to want to be funding six months from now. Um, I can't remember what we've funded in the past, but I feel like we've done 20 or 30 in the past. And Wayne is incredibly mm -hmm. adept at making do with whatever he's got. So. <laughs> yeah, I remember 30 also, but 30 has always been this moment where we've sort of come to the end of our funding in a in a meeting and said, wow, we just don't have much left, but we can give you 30. And and um, and you're right, Wayne's been really adept at, at using this as a way of going after larger money and more land and more opportunity. So I would be happy to support the conservation fund for its full amount, but I'd also be happy not to see him come back in the spring and ask for conservation fund money, which, which he, he does. Will. He will. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, maybe this is, this is a, once this year, once this year, the conservation fund. Okay. Well, no, I was she took the words right out of my mouth. I'm, I'm always reluctant to fund slush funds, yeah. and I'm more than happy to call it that. Um, uh, I think seed money is a generous definition of what it is, although I do understand how it functions. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a effectively a workaround from for getting funding from this committee for projects that we may or may not um, support on their own merits. So, um, but having said that. Um, 
and given the fact that this is probably our only round, um, I would mm -hmm. I would probably go the full fifty. Or no. We're, we're, We've been we're this is our last project. Where do you have a hundred and something left? Eighty. We have about eighty left. Yeah. yeah. But, but no. Still, but I mean, really having really you know. Way. All right. Well, then rewor rewording that last sentence and saying. Fully funding with the acknowledgement that I will be funding it again in the spring. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I, uh, I'm sure Wayne and Sarah would object to the slush fund term, but I think when, if, we, if you look at the proposal, we have the last three pages, which shows some of the um, some of the stuff that the conservation fund has helped to allocate, I and mean, I think a lot of these. These are projects that, that we don't see, that don't come to us. And it's amazing to me what Sarah and Wayne can do with a little bit of money. And I, I think this is incredibly important to keep, uh, to keep the flexibility that Sarah's office has in, in being able to do really good work with actually a pretty small amount of money. So I'm very, very supportive of this. Any other discussion on this one? All right, if we fund this at 50, it would bring us up to 785,877. Is that right, Julia? Mm -hmm. I think you okay. subtracted. No, I think I did it right, right? 785? 785. That's okay. 412. The last one was 125, 412. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it has to end at 412. No, because I think what we missed was early on we said 84, 80, comma 465 on the housing supportive services, but um, it keeps going to everybody's special um, is 80. And the, the oh, I had 80 on the nose. Okay. 80, 465. That's how, that's how we had that odd. The, the, the 465 was tacked on to the um, housing supportive services. Okay. So the 785, 877 is correct. Well, you know what? Let's, let's deal with that in a minute. Um, the motion on the floor yeah. is to fully fund 50000 for the Northampton Conservation Commission. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Uh, Dave, was that a, that, that was a, yeah. that was a cool question. I'd like to do that. Can't do both. <laughs> I'll go along with it. Okay. So that was a nine, nine, two, two, zero. Uh, wow. And it's only a quarter of nine. Ten up. Oh, ten up. <laughs> Holy smokes, I thought we were Do you like a baseball game or something? No, baseball. No, come on, Julie. You're the right person. Um, Southwest Blood Wars. Okay, so okay. <laughs> we have a shopping cart full of stuff. And let's just go through it real quick. Um, zero for the Academy of Music. Zero for... Uh, St. John's, 20,000 for Garfield, Pioneer Valley Habitat, 60,000 for Glendale Road, 80, what is it, 80, 465 um, for North African Housing Partnerships, 100,000 for Village Hill, 3,000 for Valley CDC, 50 for Conscom, 125 for the two open space acquisitions and 50,000 for the rail trail. Is that correct? 125 for 12, right? 125 for 12, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so we are in the checkout line. We're standing in the checkout line. We are slapping our kids' hands because they keep going for the M&Ms and the candy. So what's what's the total now that we have? Total is seven hundred and eighty-five thousand eight hundred and seventy-seven, which leaves us with eighty. Seventy-nine two ninety-four for the spring. Seventy-nine was it? Two ninety-four. Seventy-nine two ninety-four. So what was the housing supportive services? I had at eighty thousand. So what was the eighty-four six five? Eighty. Eighty thousand. Four six five. Right. Mm -hmm. Can I ask just for clarification on the open space ac um, acquisition? Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at the budget that is in the application on page seven. Can someone just explain to me how the one in twenty five four twelve was arrived at? It's not in the documentation. I don't think it was in his scenario. He yeah. can talk to us that uh, uh, he said that Mass Audubon was going to contribute, right? Okay. Uh, 
our recollection is that um, without the Mass Audubon contribution, mm -hmm. it would have been um, an additional, this was for Rocky Hill, correct? Uh, it would have been additional, um, right. what is that, 34,000, 36,000? Yeah, they had the Wilson Realty East Hampton Road purchase um, at 102,000, right. and that would go down to 75, 4, 412. Okay. So essentially, Martha, Audubon is kicking in a little bit more on this. I see. And the ask goes down from 166 to 125,000. Okay. And that was our, our motion was at that 125. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other, um, so now is the time to tweak our shopping cart. Is there anyone that would like to speak to the speaking? Our vote would be for the entire shopping cart, not going item by item. So now is the time to speak. Or are we set to check out? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm mulling. Do what are you mulling, Linda? I'm mulling trying to shave a little out to have something for for the next round and with the thought that um, 50,000 could come out of Sargent and 50,000 could come out of Village Hill and we'd have something to work with and they could come back um, for the next round to ask to ask for the, that money and we'd look at what else there was in terms of applications and make a decision. So that would take Village Hill to 50 and Sargent to 250? Right. Which would make it 300,000 altogether given the previous. And we'll be getting about 20,000 or so back from First Churches. Oh, we just made $20,000. Uh, does anyone want to comment on Linda, who is one of our two housing comment folks? Comment on Linda. <laughs> <laughs> comment on Linda. So, Linda, is there a, a uh, is that a, is that, are you still mulling that, or are you making a request to take it? Well, I'd like to hear people's thoughts on it, because I'm, um, I could, I could also just go with this as it is, because it's not that I don't support those projects at all, I, I, I do. I am just concerned about the, the projects that we don't know about and giving us some flexibility. Jeff, you want to speak as our housing person? Um, I mean, full transparency, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of Village Hill because of everything else we had on our plate. And the only thing that swayed me to go along with the original resolution were the, the show of good faith by the community to support the project. I think it's an important project. But I don't. But at, similar to what other people said, I, I kind of got the sense that this is one of these projects that this is going to go ahead, and we're like the tail on the dog. This is this is going to happen, and I didn't really see the amount that crucial. Um, I kind of went along with the hundred thousand because it seemed like that was the general sense of the um, of the rest of the committee. I'm I'm perfectly comfortable with with doing fifty and saying. Um, like we did with Sergeant, come back um, down the, down the line the way we did with Sergeant House. Um, you, and your thoughts on um, reducing the Sergeant House down to two fifty, given the the fifty that came back? Um, at this point, I'm all in for Sergeant for the for the three hundred because of the um, the dual function. It's historic and it's. It's single room occupancy. So, and we already postponed doing what we could. And yes, we didn't have a lot of funds at the time, but we, we did what we could. Um, I'm under the point now where um, I'd rather try to support them as much as we can right now. So I was kind of thinking that, uh, uh, like Jack was talking about a potential trade-off um, of the one for the other, and there's a, certainly a grain of truth in that. And I, I thought the way to go now was more toward um, 
Sargent right now because we've already we've already dealt with them um, previously. It's a great project. They're both good projects. But I just think the timing right now. Um, I think it, I, I'm swayed by showing um, good faith on the part of the community to support affordable housing. Um, but I think right now, a, Sergeant House is like, to me, rounding second, headed for third. Mm -hmm. um, Village Hill is just getting to first base. I could go with that, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I go, I'm, I'm, I'm on board with that. Sure. On board meaning reducing village yeah, yeah, I, I, I find, I find, I, I like, I like Linda's mullings and I like Jeff's fine tuning. So I would, I would go 50 for the uh, uh, So we're removing, so Linda, do you want to make a proposal out of this? I propose that village will be funded at 50,000. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, discussion? Speak to that, not. I, think, I, I think it's a good job. Just, especially in terms of the visibility of projects in town, mm -hmm. most people will never see the Village Hill project. Just as in terms of not only just you know what does CPA do for me, but also it's a, you know there's a missing tooth from downtown. That's a little bit, that I think you know, there's a sort of civic duty aspect of the story. Um, I agree. So the, the urban fabric. Any other discussion? On, so the proposal is to reduce, to remove from the shopping cart uh, the hundred thousand and to put it back in at fifty thousand for Village Hill. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Uh, so that's a eight to one. Love that. Okay. Um, so Linda, your your mulling on the reducing um, sergeant house from 300 to I'm 250 is not is there's no motion there no, I, I, I love to support sergeant house I think it's this, that should have happened yesterday so so what why would we want to talk about maybe increasing the funding on sergeant house uh, part of the part of my goal here yeah, certainly you could, but let's see, have right. something left over of some that would allow us to do something uh, significant. Now you've got so, 129 yeah. plus. Yes, yeah, so we're down now to 735,877, I believe. And what did you just say, Anne? 100, 129 plus. 120, I mm -hmm. call it 130,000. Plus, plus another 20, maybe. That we just yeah. made, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so. Okay, so anyone else want to fine tune our shopping cart? Do you want to make a motion? Um, I think I'm still stuck with how I feel about what happens. You know, the, the I, I would I would love to. S we have the money to fund Sergeant to a greater extent, but I'm still stuck on that. What happens in the spring piece? And that's a hard hard place to stick. Is that a, if we get forty thousand dollars to the conservation fund last round, we can drop it down. Maybe, maybe a less tight year. I don't know. That's arguable, I guess, but but it was less tight or not. But. Yeah, I, I think that small that, that's big impact dollars, sm small savings, and I would just think it's going to fully fund the conservation fund. So. Seems to me that there's already. That money <laughs> will be spent almost immediately on a few projects that then have been put off, if I'm not mistaken. In the conservation fund? Uh-huh. Okay, so we're still fine-tuning our shopping cart. We've done one thing with Village Hill. Anybody else want to pick an item out and fine-tune it? Any further discussion on this? Okay, so... Do we need a, I think we need another motion. Can someone do the 735-877 for total of all these projects? I'll make a motion that we fund the projects that we have listed, that we have selected here, for a total of $735,877. Second. Okay, 
Any further discussion on this? All those in favor? All those against? Wow. Okay, that doesn't mean we're done. <laughs> no, but that was um, impressive, I guess. That's uh, not, uh, not what I expected. Yes. Oh, All right. Um, so we we're starting to think alike. So so we've got um, a number of things that we need to deal with. One is, we, and I think it's too late to go back with conditions, but I think we are going to, we're going to look carefully. I'm thinking specifically with, say, um, perhaps housing partnership to, put, to make it clear what it is that we want out of that, and, um, and perhaps some of these, some of these others uh, as, as well. Um, so I don't think that's going to, to take all, uh, all that long. At some point, we will be coming back and discussing the wage theft issue. One thing I did to mention in the chair's report was that uh, Sarah and I met with the mayor and um, three representatives from the from the from the union folks and had what I thought was actually quite an interesting discussion with some proposals that will be coming back to us. There's there's not a necessity to do that, Sarah, until contracts go out. Which would be in January. Uh, thanks, folks, for sticking. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Nice job. Yes, thank you. Um, so I'm not sure that discussion would, that we need to have until January when we come back. But um, all right, we, we, we still have to meet in December. We still have to meet in December. Yes. But my request was: um, Is there a way now to not meet the 30th? I'm sorry, the 29th but to meet that first Wednesday in December as our last meeting. What date is the December? December 6th, 6th which was a, on the schedule anyway. Yeah. But we have the 30th for it, I and mean the 29th as an extra meeting, just in case. This yes. process often takes two meetings. It did not. Yeah, that's just yeah. So we have, a we have so a November 29th on the folks right now. We and a December 6th as well. Yeah, and I... Oh, I'm asking. It's fine. Well, some of us do. Twenty ninth, and then the sixth would be fine. This is is the sixth okay? Instead of the twenty ninth. So the twenty ninth. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Good. Um, any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? Oh, you know what? Let me say one thing on this. So, um, uh, if folks can come in with specific conditions that uh, they think are appropriate for these projects that helps the conversation go. And I will send around draft council orders that in advance great. of the meeting and if we can, I can get that to work then we can look at them during the meeting. And if anybody actually has any anything really important that they think of that they like to see as a condition to make it into the, the council order then feel free to send that to me and we'll put it in. Great. Great. For those applications that are not supported, do the applicants get feedback? Yes. And that can, if anybody, I will craft something <laughs> and talk to them. If there's anything specific that you think I should include, let me know, because I'll be doing that. Uh, uh, one thing I would suggest is maybe the Academy of Music might want to take some of their small projects and introduce those as small grants, since some of them were below the they, they were below the three thousand dollar. It might be a way to get some painting done or something. That they and I was also going to encourage them to come back with other projects that Always. that might have more of a historic impact than those particular ones. Mm -hmm. Any other business not foreseen when agenda was published? Is there a motion to adjourn? In a second, so moved all by. Yay!